for us it was uh, more like a coincidence. We started during our studies um, and we were trying to find a more meaningful way of um, executing our profession, I think. I always wanted to work with sustainability. But sustainability is kind of always on the like a bound, like on the, the edge of something and of not like being sustainability. But there it is very isolated. So that's like where sustainability is like really needed. They need to be self-sufficient. They make, need to make their own energy and, and stuff like that. So I had like uh, had like this great opportunity to, you know, evolve in that way. That I felt there was a vacuum in the in the architecture profession for this kind of work. And if we could make a network, then all these people who were interested in this could join each other. <laughs> so I was making a platform for this work to happen. That was my main interest, or driver, I suppose. There were some points of desperation in the middle, but in the end we decided that we would go through with the whole thing. And I guess that we managed to build actually a, a, a real building over there. Would be a, the biggest success story so far. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's the first project that we did ever. So we didn't really believe that we could build anything. With this first prototype house, we came to a, a solution that we um, that was good good enough to try. Like we want to try these techniques with because we integrate um, a lot of techniques. Uh, about uh, rainwater harvesting, also grey water cleaning, ecological sanitation, and we've also had many discussions about what uh, local materials to use. And we sort of just wanted to um, to try it in a small house first to see that it's that our, our thoughts are, are working, and then we will see now after this first uh, house. We have to go far to be able to do meaningful work because we can't do it in the midst of our own problems. We can't see the problems. There is no problem in our society, sort of. And, uh, and they don't need to have any answers either. So I think in our society, architects are a kind of decorate, decorators of uh, the modern vocabulary nowadays. Uh, but I think this question about like how well our work responds to uh local needs is, uh, is an interesting but also problematic question. We discussed it a lot and we, um, we came to the conclusion that it's like you can't really mention it as a singular need that needs to be, uh, you know, uh, or a singular problem that needs to be resolved, but it's uh, at least a dual need. Like it's, uh, it's um, always uh, some sort of physical need in the place where you go to that needs uh, some kind of practical solution, but it's just as much like our need to do something. I mean, we find it equally interesting to investigate our own position as uh, as architects, as Westerners, uh, coming in coming in somewhere to do something. That the see it's important to talk a little bit about what architecture is, the profession, because every time I'm telling people uh, outside the profession that we are involved in these projects then I always get a question like, oh, isn't architecture only for the rich people or isn't it only fancy stuff? And I think that's a big shame because the profession is about um, noticing a project, uh, a problem and then researching and trying to find a solution to this specific pro uh, problem and then make a building that solve or try at least to solve a problem. Uh, for me, building out site in India or some other places is, has teached me a lot of something I could use actually here because now I feel more and more that the problems are here, not there. The solutions are there, simple solutions and kind of uh, straight action when it comes to architecture. For all of us doing this project, it's, we have to we have to be um, humble enough to, to listen to what's going on around us when we're working in the field. I think the biggest lesson for me was that you can do whatever you wish if you want to. 
So it's not about an issue of money. It's not about uh, time. But it's just uh, what you believe in and uh, what you really want to do. And then you can do it. Or it's the learning experience that you really get a lot of input from this, both from meeting a lot of people, but also from actually a new situation that you're not really used to, maybe in as working as an architect or planner in Sweden. You, you have to look at uh, different solve problems in, in a new way and in a way. So I think that's, uh, yeah. You know, the main reason I did this was probably in the end that I felt that this was something that this is something that could give me something back as well, that like experience and when others gain from something that you do, you always gain something back again. So I think that's basically the main reason. I think there's actually a lot of selfishness included in it because it's so interesting and so rewarding to work in a new com new kind of culture and also to see that what you do really has an impact on people's lives. So it's important with architecture anywhere, but it's somehow so so touchable. <laughs>